This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you ever noticed talking about something can make it feel less overwhelming? That is what therapy is for, because when we keep everything bottled up inside, it's much harder to work through it. Connect with a licensed therapist at betterhelp.com super. Hey, brother. Goblet of Fire is one of those stories that when you finally find out how it's all tied together, it's pretty mind blowing. Like Winky in the top box was actually there with Barty Crouch Jr. He's the one who took over Mad-Eye's body. Mad-Eye was such a great teacher to Harry the whole year, but secretly he was pulling the strings. In my personal opinion, it's always just been the story at its best, what Harry Potter does well. But so many different things could have gone ever so slightly wrong along the way. Like Dobby, for example, may not have picked up what fake Mad-Eye was throwing down about the gillyweed and how Harry needed it for the second task. Harry could have just gotten outright scorched by the Hungarian Horntail, just lost to the dragon. Or Cedric could have just won the tournament outright on his own. And quite frankly, that last one almost literally happens. I mean, he's standing there in front of the cup by himself. He's staring at the kind of glory that Hufflepuff House has not known for a long, long time. But Cedric is just too good. He is too kind, which for clarity is the exact perfect amount. Cedric knows the role that Harry has had in this entire experience. He probably even knows deep down that despite the fact that he has considerably less schooling, Harry is still right there next to him. He still made it to this exact moment. And I think Cedric even knows that he was able to bask in the glory, bask in what it meant to be the true Hogwarts champion, while Harry, on the other hand, had to be subject to ridicule and bullying for the entire year. So they share the glory, if only for a brief moment before. Kill the stag! This one is always so hard to grapple with because I genuinely believe that Cedric is supposed to represent the good in all people. It's not actually in the books, but one of my favorite movie lines comes from Dumbledore at the end of this year when they're remembering Cedric. A fierce, fierce friend. Being a fierce friend is just something that I can only encourage every single person who is watching this video right now to go out into the world and do. Because there's absolutely no doubt about it. We could all use someone like that in our own lives. But for the purposes of today's video, we want to ask one of our all-time favorite questions. What if? What if Barty Crouch Jr.'s plan didn't work out as expected? What if, despite all of his meddling, Cedric, fantastic wizard that he is, simply touched the cup first? everyone, exciting news. This summer, Jay and I will be attending RTX in Austin, Texas, the weekend of July 7th through the 9th. We're going to be hosting an in-person trivia event with a meet and greet to follow. We would absolutely love to meet you. Tickets are available now in the description down below. Okay, so what if only Cedric touched the cup? And it could either be because he just simply got to the center of the maze first or because Harry, selfless lad that he is, kind of does a fake out on him. Three, two, <gasps> Cedric? Where'd you go, bud? Where'd you go? Great. This is great. This is not gonna look good. It doesn't exactly really matter how we get there in the first place. All that really matters is that what would happen is Cedric would arrive alone in the graveyard without Harry Potter, which from Voldemort's point of view would mean that his plan has failed because he will not be able to take Harry's blood to rebuild his human body. Which, if you will recall, the reason that Voldemort wants Harry's blood specifically in the first place is because three years prior, Harry and him had a little face-off, if you will. <laughs> Get it? Face-off? You all got it. In that moment, for some reason, Quirrell decided to physically assault Harry instead of using, you know, Magic? The result being that the lingering protection from Lily's sacrifice immediately activated and burned Quirrell to a just little old crispy crisp. Now, even though Voldemort has absolutely no need to physically touch Harry in order to kill him, it is a hill that he has decided to die on, or in this case, return on, I guess. Either way, he is dead set on overcoming this particular obstacle, and the entire plot of Goblet of Fire pretty much revolves around this singular mission, which again, is just kind of an enormous and ridiculous hoop for him to jump through, considering the fact that after his return, his very next step in the plan is just to murder him, which again, in this case, he actually could have maybe taken a leaf out of Quirrell's book, does not involve touching him this time. So like, seriously, dude, why are you doing this? Just so you can prove that you can touch him two minutes before he's gone anyway? It makes no sense unless 
That's not how the original plan was intended to play out as the night unfolded. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever wondered like, why does the cup go back to Hogwarts? Like why does the port key activate again? Like we know how port keys work. They were explained to us. Why are they all standing around that manky old boot? That isn't just any manky old boot, mate. It's a port key. In this very book, why give Harry like a possible escape route. Every other port key works in one direction, at one time, at one specific time. And for me, I feel like the answer is actually fairly obvious. I think that he intended to return to Hogwarts on that very night. So if you consider the fact that there's no real need for him to physically be able to touch him again, considering the fact that he can just use his wand, and that he also has a return trip to Hogwarts already set up as part of the equation in the first place, I think we can start to deduce what his plan is, especially when you consider how Barty Crouch Jr. was concealing himself as Moody for an entire year. The real plan was for Voldemort to ultimately get Harry to the graveyard and use his blood to return his body and then kill him. But the plan doesn't end there. At that point, he would use Harry's hair or something else to create Polyjuice Potion to return to the school as Harry. And by all accounts, the, a Triwizard Champion. Woohoo! <laughs> because that's the other like really big question about the cup being in the dead center of the maze. Like how was this event supposed to end under the most ideal circumstances? Three. Three. And then they're in the middle of a maze. There's no roaring crowd or loud music or announcement of a winner. Unless of course it was always intended to be a port key in the first place by design. And what it would do is transport the champion from the center of the maze to the opening where everybody could see them crowned victor. In a way, Voldemort's plan is actually quite elegant in this regard. Like nobody can see inside of the maze and nobody knows how long it's supposed to take. So once he knows that Harry has successfully made it to the center and therefore the graveyard, he can pretty much take as much time as he needs. Plus if he arrives back, as Harry, then nobody will know that Harry is actually dead or that Voldemort has returned and he'll have a prime shot at Dumbledore all in one night, which basically sums up his plan for the next three books anyway. Book five, people assume he's not actually back. Book six, kill Dumbledore. Book seven, kill Harry. Beyond all that though, I think this also gives even more reason to understand why he specifically needed Harry's blood, because if he's going to need to use a piece of Harry in order to make the Polyjuice Potion, then he would need to be able to physically touch him. This would go so far beyond just simply even coming in physical contact with him. It would be becoming him entirely, which I think would immediately incinerate his brand new body. The irony of the entire situation is of course the fact that when he does in fact take Harry's own blood into himself, he also basically seals his own fate because Harry is now anchored to life via Lily's sacrifice in Voldemort's blood. It's essentially what we like to call a love crux. He took my blood, said Harry. Precisely, said Dumbledore. He took your blood and rebuilt his living body with it. Your blood in his veins, Harry. Lily's protection inside both of you. He tethered you to life while he lives. I live while he lives? But I thought, I thought it was the other way around. I thought we both had to die. Or is it the same thing? Guys, we need to take a quick moment to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. As warmer weather starts to creep around the corner at this time of year, it is always when I want to start getting prepared for being outside. And I always know that Bespoke Post has my back. And they do this through partnerships with small businesses who make really cool products that I may have never found if not for Bespoke Post. For example, the next box that I am personally looking forward to is called Parked and it features a small camp chair that actually folds down to smaller than the size of a shoebox. And for me, despite being a subscriber to Bespoke Post long before they were ever a sponsor of the channel, this one is actually a first for me. I have actually already ordered this box in the past and my wife loved the chair so much, I ordered it again so that we can each have one. Beyond that though, you may have also noticed that I'm having a particularly good hair day. That is thanks to my most recent box, which was called Freshen. The Freshen box comes with everything that you need to have a truly sustainable showering experience. Me personally, I am a huge fan of supporting products that don't involve shipping water all around the country. And one of the cool products that comes in the Freshen box is just a brick of shampoo. If you've never used a bar of shampoo before, it can be a new and kind of interesting experience, but I promise you the lather is at least 10 times that of liquid shampoo. Plus, I feel like the product speaks for itself. You know what I mean? 
Hopefully you do. My point is that in addition to all the products being eco-friendly, they also work amazingly well. Like it comes with this charcoal scrubber that when it came in the mail, it was like a brick. It was really hard and rigid. And then as soon as I got into the shower, it became very soft and pliable. And I feel like the definition of what gently exfoliating actually means. On the whole, Bespoke Post has a huge variety of available products. And a lot of times it actually is my entry point to cool and unique products like a bar of shampoo. So no matter what you personally are into, I can almost guarantee that each month there will be something that will pique your interest. Again, I have been a subscriber to Bespoke Post since 2014, long before they ever sponsored us here at Super Carlin Brothers. I highly recommend you checking them out, especially because right now you can get 20% off your first box when you head on over to boxofawesome.com and use promo code SUPER at checkout. Again, that's going to be boxofawesome.com, promo code SUPER at checkout for 20% off your first box. boxofawesome.com, promo code SUPER, link is in the description down below. But, so of course it brings us back to the question for today's video, what happens if only Cedric touches the cup? Does Voldemort just simply kill him for being there in the first place, then curse the skies and bide his time for another opportunity to gain access to Harry's blood? It's certainly possible, but in that case, he does have a brand new problem, which is that the cup is now missing from the center of the maze and there is no Triwizard Champion. And it's not that Voldemort particularly cares about the results of the Triwizard Tournament, but if nobody returns after long enough, for sure they're going to want to check in on the champions and see what's going on and ultimately discover that both Cedric and the cup are missing. Barty Crouch Jr., who was undercover as Mad-Eye Moody, is also the one who set up the port key in the first place, so I think he would be under immediate investigation. And from there, I think the entire plot could start to unravel and Dumbledore would just know that Voldemort is in fact back, which would be even worse for Voldemort under these particular circumstances, because under these circumstances, Voldemort wouldn't actually even really be back. He would just sort of still be in that weird kind of gross baby form that gets dumped into the cauldron. So I think that just killing Cedric really isn't an option for him and he would see that immediately. He would actually have to replace the plan and use Cedric instead of Harry, which in Voldemort's mind is not exactly ideal, but Voldemort's wrong. Of course, he would never know that. But he doesn't have much of a choice in the situation and replacing Harry with Cedric would still allow the plan to work. After all, the only caveat for the person's blood that's being used for the potion is that it is forcibly taken from the enemy. Of the blood of the enemy? forcibly taken, you will resurrect your foe. Which this will be no issue as far as the potion is concerned because Cedric is innately good and Voldemort is innately bad. Even if Cedric himself has no standing quarrel with Voldemort, he would surely stand opposed to him. Really, if you wanna look at it realistically, the main issue is that I could see a scenario where Cedric is just okay with sharing his blood. In which case, it would not be forcibly taken. And you know what? Let's just pull on that thread for a second because I think it's fun. Of a blood forcibly taken. No need, I'll happily share. What you need? I'm O negative, universal donor. Uh, you surely don't wish me to take your blood. Yeah, I'll share, happy to help in any way I can. Wabdell, who is this kid? He, he's a Hufflepuff, my lord. Hufflepuffs are winning tournaments. Man, that school has really gone downhill. Was there even a Slytherin involved? I'm, I'm afraid not just this boy and the Potter kid. You guys know Harry. He just let me win great, like great lad. Told me about the dragons. I'll probably share the gold with him. Webtail, this is a complete failure. C -c Can I have my hand back, please? No. I'm not gonna lie now. I just want to write an entire stage production about Cedric being unfailingly nice. Anyway, though, as nice as Cedric absolutely is, I do not think that he would be willing to offer up his blood under these particular circumstances. And therefore, I do think his blood could be used to bring Voldemort's body back. At which point, yeah, I think he would unfortunately kill Cedric and then return to Hogwarts as Cedric, which from his point of view would not be the perfect way the night could have gone because Harry would still be alive, but at least nobody would know about his return, which is a very big deal. Lupin and Bill eventually explain this to Harry when he arrives at the Order of the Phoenix headquarters at Grimmauld Place. Nobody apart from his Death Eaters was supposed to know he'd come back, but you survived to bear witness. And the very last person he wanted alerted to his return the moment he got back was Dumbledore, said Lupin and you made sure Dumbledore knew at once. How has that helped? Harry asked. Are you kidding? Said Bill incredulously. 
Dumbledore was the only one you know who was ever scared of. But this go round, there is a very real chance that Valda Cedric would be able to get close to Dumbledore very, very quickly. It's possible that Voldemort's very first action upon reappearing would be taking down the only person he ever feared. Which, true, would then announce his return. He's back basically right away, but it would also be at the hands of destroying his one true opposition. Well, almost. Obviously, there's still Harry, who is probably standing in the middle of the maze, still wondering like, where'd Cedric go? And you might think like, well, yeah, that's still gonna be kind of an issue for Voldemort, because as soon as Harry does show up, if he tries to attack, their wands are gonna do the whole twin core thing and priori incantatum. However, if he is disguised as Cedric and decided to go full bore with it and use Cedric's wand, then the twin core protection isn't there. This is usually what allows Expelliarmus to actually block Avada Kedavra. However, without the additional protection, it would just sail right through Harry's defenses. And because Voldemort did not use Harry's blood, Harry wouldn't be love cruxed to Voldemort via Lily's sacrifice. And you might be wondering about like the golden flames that we see during the Battle of the Seven Potters, but that would also not happen because the only reason Harry's wand is charged with Voldemort's power is because of the duel in the graveyard in the first place, and that didn't happen. And there would be no falsely loyal Elder Wand to Voldemort that could potentially backfire this go round. In fact, if he's already killed Dumbledore, then he might just quite literally be the master of the Elder Wand. All I'm really trying to say here though is that Harry? would just die. And worst of all, if Voldemort is doing all of this under the cover of Cedric's physical form, then I think that there's still this really unfortunate chance, namely due to Fudge, that the wizarding world doesn't actually believe that Voldemort is even back. Clearly, this tournament was too much for Diggory, and he cracked under the pressure. Which sadly leads me to believe that Voldemort will be back at full power and just knocked out two of his biggest obstacles, Harry and Dumbledore, possibly still maintained a certain amount of cover, the Order of the Phoenix would have no chance whatsoever to be formed in the first place, and absolutely worst of all, I could still see Fudge appointing Umbridge in year five. We saw the damaging effects of the tournament last year. It's clear that these students can't handle the stresses of competition. Supreme Leader Umbridge will be our eyes and ears in the castle to ensure that not a single student is having fun while the darkest wizard ever who lived rises to power unopposed. Isn't it frustrating that that doesn't even seem unreasonable at all? Really, on the whole, if Cedric takes the cup on his own, then it's simply game over. Which I know could be kind of sad to think about, but. Not to worry, because I don't ever think this situation would have been on the table in the first place. Tom Riddle was completely incapable of feeling either love or remorse. These are the characteristics that allowed him to become Voldemort in the first place. And for me, I personally think the same is true for Cedric. After all, he does get there first. He could have won. This entire situation was nothing but a bare arms reach away from actually happening. But it never would have because of who Cedric is at his core. He is loving and fair and above all else. A fierce, fierce friend. Cedric would always be fair to Harry because Harry would have always been fair to him. And Harry is exactly who he is because Voldemort made him that way. So. As always, Voldemort is his own ultimate undoing. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to find out what would have happened if Draco had actually killed Dumbledore on the lightning struck tower, you can check out this video right over here. But otherwise, until next time, bye.